What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of GG Gaming. I am your host, Andrew, and with me today, I have wreck -It Ryan. Hey, everyone. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, back we haven't the dead. yeah, we haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> Uh, what what uh, what have you been up to in these past few weeks? Uh, I have been trying to keep myself sane with uh, completing dental school requirements. I have my big licensing exam coming up later this week, um, so that's a little bit scary. Mm -hmm. Ooh! And then other than that, I've been uh, just having fun with uh, Smash and Skyrim, and uh, had a lot of thoughts about the direct. On cool. uh, the 13th, so I'm happy to talk about that if uh, yeah. we do a, a double dip there. Yeah, we we spoke about that um, last episode less than a week ago because we had a, a late episode uh, last week. Uh, but, you know, getting your thoughts on it and talking more about it uh, sounds fine in my book. Um, so, I have been playing the same stuff uh, as I mentioned last time. Played a bit more of Kingdom Hearts 3. It still didn't beat it yet. Uh, and I'm at the very end, I believe it's the very end. Uh, mm. How many I, how many hours have you put into it so far? Uh, I think about forty. Okay, so. I, I I've heard it's like relative to the other Kingdom Hearts, not as long as a game to to beat. But mm -hmm. I, I, like all Kingdom Hearts <laughs> games, if you want to a hundred percent it, you have to devote a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, I kept going back to get all of the lucky emblems and treasures from the different worlds. So uh, if I didn't do that, uh, probably would have been a little less um, less uh, what you call it hours. <laughs> right. <laughs> Couldn't think of the word. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, uh, I'm enjoying it. And I'm looking forward to seeing how it ends. It's unfortunate that Leonard Nimoy passed away because I just can't get mm. over the fact that Master Xehanort yeah. is not Leonard Nimoy in this game. It's just yeah, like, it that... sounds weird, him having a different voice. Mm -hmm. Like, the guy they got to do his voice is good, but it doesn't sound the same. And I feel like they could have probably found somebody who could have impersonated Leonard Nimoy closer. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Disney could have found somebody to sound like Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> um, right, there has to be someone out there who's who sounds like him <laughs> a little bit closer. Yeah, <laughs> but see, I when I saw trailers for Toy Story World, I I didn't think that uh, Buzz or Woody really sounded like them. But playing the game, they you know they sounded like them to me. Uh, so that that was cool. So they impersonated them pretty well. Uh, but it just I, I can't get over the fact that Leonard Nimoy's voice is not attached to Master Xehanort. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I guess he did have a pretty, <laughs> um, pretty unique voice. Mm -hmm. You know, being Mr. Spock and everything, he kind of has a pretty unique character associated with him. So yeah, uh, and for some reason, I don't know why his character model in this game they made his head look a bit more veiny, um, not like veins mm. protruding. But like you can see them in in his head, like they're you know, like uh, if if you see on somebody's body or like on your arm or something, you could you could kind of see your veins under the skin a bit. Like they did that with his head, so I don't know why. Yes, yeah. like, that is an interesting choice. Does it have yeah. anything to do with the story? <laughs> no, not that I know of. And I have no idea what they were thinking I, there. I really so that kind of throws me off a bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> The veiny head and the different voice, um, but so obviously I'm not going to go into any spoilers with it. But I am running into situations where I'm like, "How does this make sense?" Like I'm trying to piece it together in my head because I'm going in with information from all the Kingdom Hearts games, and so I'm pretty familiar with the lore. To uh, remind me, what? did you did you play the like the phone game and everything? Yeah. Okay, so you I you have everything. the full lore. Yeah. You... <laughs> wow. So there was a, so even with that, there was a, just a couple of things that, from a very technical perspective, confused me. Like, um, again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but like a character appears, and I know who the character is, but um, I don't know why the character appears after a certain event happens. It's like, what caused that character to appear? Like, there's like, mm. and I can't understand, I can't explain further without spoiling it, so I won't, but it's just like, 
there are little th- little minor things that that bother that me. Any- I'm like, well, why did this happen and why did that happen? And right. one of the things that I hoping to get explained that just hasn't gotten explained um, is at the end of Dream Drop Distance, after all the characters from um, all, all the incarnations of Master Xehanort that appeared from the past that got brought together for the true organization 13. Um, and these aren't spoilers because this is the ending of Dream Drop Distance. Um, <laughs> Master Z- Xehanort, look, his plan was to get 13 darknesses and then he used he tries to get Sora as one of them but then they wind up failing and then he says that they they ran out of time and then they're going to meet in like the destined place which is you know alluding to Kingdom Hearts 3 but the thing that kind of confuses me is um how do they meet again if they ran out of time cuz when they ran out of time like all the characters, uh, the incarnations of Xehanort, returned to their respective points in the timeline. So it's like, how did they come back again? Did, like, the person, did, um, like, young Xehanort, because when, okay, so when the Heartless version of Ansem, or Xehanort, uh, tells his younger self to go forward in time and do this, um, does he tell, like, when he returns, does he tell him to go a second time (laughs) and do it again? (laughs) It's like that, it was a little yeah. confusing to me, um, because when you travel back in time again, like when, when he returns from the future, he doesn't have uh, any memories. Like, he, you kind of leave the memories behind. So mm-hmm. how would he know that he would need to go a second time? Unless that right. was part of the plan, unless it was planned to go twice from, from the get-go. Uh, mm. So it's just like, yeah. that was one thing that confused me. Yeah, especially as a super fan, like those little inconsistencies can yeah. really bother you for sure. Yeah, um, definitely. I, I think I, time travel is so cool for for me. Like I love when TV shows and stuff. Like I don't know if you've ever watched The Flash, but they have no. a lot of cool time travel motifs and things. I thought the first season was really really good, and then the second season was still good, but then there are like some inconsistencies with the time travel arc and how mm. everything kind of made sense. And then as they introduce more and more, I just feel like, oh, man, they really this kind of the pure, like just perfect interlocking of every all the different events at the past, present and future, how it all worked together. The more they tried to do with it, the more bogged down it got. And Mm -hmm. uh, like the more I kind of lost track of everything and felt like there are too many inconsistencies. So I don't know if it's the same kind of idea, but yeah. yeah, it gets a little bit trickier the more and more you add on, the more sequels you have. It's a little bit harder to keep yeah. track of everything. Now, I don't think there's really any inconsistencies. It's just there's a lot of unexplained stuff that kind of throws me off, which mm-hmm. kind of lets you patch them together in your head. Well, th- but yeah, I that's... want def- a definitive answer. I don't want to have to guess, like, well, maybe he went in the future twice. like, I, I, And something else, like, actually a couple of things towards the end of Kingdom Hearts 3 that threw me for a loop too. And I was like, why did this happen? Or like, what caused this to happen? Or how did this character know to do mm-hmm. this? Like, it's just like little things like that. Like, well, again, not necessarily inconsistent, but just like, how did so-and-so knew, know to do that? And how did this happen as a result of doing this? And how did this character come in when they didn't before? And it's just like, it's like, what... You know, I need some more answers. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. I th- some of those mysteries can be frustrating, or they could be really fun to theorycraft about. And if you go on Reddit and people have all these different theories about <clears throat> you know, how, how things work, or I don't know if they're explained later in the story, but some of that can be fun to an mm-hmm. extent. Yeah, and um, if those things were to make sense, or, I mean, they do make sense, but, like, if they were to be explained better, I think I would have had a better time. Uh huh. Um, not that I'm yeah. having, not that I'm having a bad time, but those kind of things throw me off because when I'm, I'm so deep into the lore, like I'm like, <laughs> I'm yeah, like best. swimming underneath <laughs> the water of lore. Uh, not even like way more than knee deep. So like I have a pretty good grasp on understanding stuff, and there are questions I have that still have not been answered. Uh, that have been raised in the past, like, um, uh, let's say in, in Kingdom Hearts 2, for example, Xemnas 
is the nobody of um uh, of Xehanort who took on the name Ansem. Uh so he did have the ability to use a keyblade. So it was always asked t- uh why he wasn't able to use a keyblade as a nobody. Like why did Xemnas not have the ability to use a keyblade? And Tetsuya Nomura had stated, you know, maybe um he was purposefully not using it or something like that. Um, so I just kind of assumed, oh, well, maybe he'll answer that. And I'm still waiting for that answer. <laughs> like, why? Like, it, it, cause if, if it doesn't get answered, then it's almost like a plot hole, you know? Like, yeah, that's what you hope is not the case, but it's like, sometimes it's hard to. How did he gain the ability to use those lightsabers as a nobody? Like, can you just, like, explain? Like, just some little thing to explain that would, like, make it so much better. (laughs) (laughs) Not that it's bad, but it kind of doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Unless he did explain that, and I didn't didn't know that, but, you know, I I look on the wiki here and there, and it still hasn't been answered, so, unless the person, unless the article wasn't updated. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't know the answer, probably no one else does. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I am this... almost a walking encyclopedia for Kingdom Hearts. Almost, yeah, because I know yeah. a lot of a lot of it. I know pretty much, pretty much all of the lore. Like I could explain stuff to you, but um, it's just like things like that kind of throw me off a bit. <laughs> right, right. Uh, well, come. You'll have to come up with your own theory and get back to us. What do yeah. you think? <laughs> well, I do, but I can't explain it because they're all spoilers anyway. So maybe in like ten years from now, <laughs> it's like <laughs> when it's I fair game, o- openly talk about it, isn't it? Yeah. Not spoiler territory. When, when um, the copyright is expired. Yeah, because it's like I I asked on on Game because I wanted to know what other people thought, and I was kind of confused about stuff. Um, and actually, there's some things I could there's there's something I could talk about that's not spoiler because it's pretty open. The fact that all the worlds used to be one world. Um, kind of throws off the lore of each world because, um, like, let's say, for example, um, Pir- the Pirates of the Caribbean world, the Caribbean, um, it's like, okay, that used to be attached to the greater world. So then why, when you visit it, you look more detailed, like the movie characters, you know? So it's <laughs> like, why does your style change when you enter there? Like, imagine if it was all, you know, it used to be one world. Um, imagine if you were on that one world and you go to the Caribbean, all of a sudden you become highly detailed. <laughs> like, like there's just like a right. couple of questions that arise from, from that lore. Um, which I don't know, maybe you can argue that, uh, it's some kind of, magical in you know just a lot of the a lot of uh theory answers to these things are probably magic you know it's magic mm-hmm. so it's yeah like, when in doubt yeah so like magic. it was you know when the worlds were split magic. this one got affected by magic a bit more but then there's certain things like um M- monster zinc for example you know they they clearly go by the established lore of Monsters, Inc., where you can go to another dimension where humans exist. So you're kind of like, all right, so where is that in, in in the world of worlds? Like, where? <laughs> what dimension is that? Is it connecting to every dimension? Is it is it kind of like um two sides of a coin? Is there like a, a human world to that Monsters, Inc. world? And, oh, and if so, why didn't you get there first instead of the monster version? It's kind of like fitting these Disney and Pixar worlds into the greater lore kind of raises more questions for certain levels. Mm -hmm. Not all of them. A lot of them fit in pretty nicely, but just like a couple here and there, you're like, wait a second. Why? (laughs) (laughs) I have the answer. You're a wizard, Sora. (laughs) (laughs) You're a wizard, Sora. Magic. It's magic. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That and um, the Toy Story one throws me off a bit, too, for the same reason that um, the Cinderella, was it Cinderella? The Cinderella one did, because it's like, I can understand shrinking down and looking like a toy because Donald has magic that kind of just affects you when you go to a world, but you're kind of like, there are 
technically humans in Toy Story lore, so why did you not appear as the size of a human? Uh, and the same thing for Cinderella uh, in Birth by Sleep. Why did why was Ventus the only one who shrank um, and talked to the like the mouse and helped make the dress and whatnot? It's like there are little inconsistencies that throw me off too, but mm-hmm. that have never been answered yet, unless they have and haven't been recorded. I didn't read them yeah. yet until today. No, but they're oh, certainly eventually. weaving. Um, the cell phone game into the story of King Mark three that I'm seeing. Right. So, right. That's what I heard. Yeah. And, and that's great because I know the story, so I'm fine with it. You know, I want to see the story that I've been following from the cell phone, uh, expand into the main games where I'm sure some people feel the opposite, <laughs> but mm-hmm. it is canon. Well, so might as well make the most of it. It is canon. And there's like a video or two out there that are, they're not that long. They're like 40, 45 minutes that explain like yeah. the entirety of the cell phone lore. So yeah, you can I catch up pretty that. quickly if you want to. Yeah. I think I told oh, you, did you? Oh, I okay. remember telling you and Papa Genos about that uh, on a past episode. And then I put the links in the description. Oh, whoops. Well, that's uh, probably how I watched it. <laughs> yeah. I think I showed it to you from then. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> but yeah, it, it so you watch it, so you have an understanding of the story. I actually learned a, a couple of things that I had either forgot or didn't understand by watching that video. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. I certainly that? learned th- that I didn't realize that the original web browser game and the um, remake are both canon in the sense that the remake is a retelling of the main character's memories with an alternate ending because they were like a forced to be different. Mm-hmm. Um, which, if you watch the video, you you understand what I mean, where, like, the new foretellers wanted everyone to forget that the war ever happened in this, like, dream... I don't know if it's a dream right. world. So, um, I think it was. Yeah, so, like, the war happened at the end of the browser game, whereas in the cell phone game, it didn't happen. Didn't ha- yeah. But the main character... You know, you'll when he dreams, like they show flashbacks, like quote unquote flashbacks, too, because he's dreaming of the war, and then he like doesn't know why. So it's like, if you've played both, or in this case, just know that that happened, then it makes sense. Like knowing mm-hmm. that both are canon, the the browser game happened, and then the cell phone game is like a, is like the memory data or whatever version, you know, with false memories, right. Not that everything is false, just everything up to, you know, just the war to itself is, is false. So, um, and then the cell phone game kind of, I mean, sorry, the video uh, that explained the lore also kind of um, explained better what I had thought might have been the case. Whereas at the end of the first Kingdom Hearts, where when Maleficent loses, um, she actually... I guess because she lost her body at the end of that fight, she winds up traveling back in time. Um, and she winds up like the, the reason that Maleficent in the cell phone game mentions Sora is because that's the one from, you know, right after King Hearts one. So she traveled to the past and then, um, uh, what should I call it? Uh, um, she, she tries to change. Her past of, you know, what ha- happened, like she tries to conquer the s- Sleeping Beauty world again, and then she realizes that, you know, she can't change Destiny, and that what she's in is actually a data version anyway, and then uh, she tries to go back to where she came from in the future. Um, so that that's all in the cell phone game, so... But then that kind of raises the question, when you're messing with... When you're making prequels, like, multiple times then you kind of run into the situation of... um, Because in the cell phone game, I I think Maleficent learns... uh, Okay, I'm not sure. I don't want to spoil something in case it wasn't mentioned. But, like, Maleficent has, let's say, a a goal. Or, like, she has something that she's looking for in Kingdom Hearts 3. So then it kind of raises the question of if in the cell phone game she winds up returning... Back to the Future, that would be before Kingdom Hearts 2, so why wasn't she looking for that during Kingdom Hearts 2? <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. Unless she was, but it wasn't revealed. I don't know. It's uh, a little tricky when you're dealing with 
you know, uh, establishing prequel plots. And then you kind of run into the situation, well, why didn't the character do that? You know? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, because we don't have too much time today, do you want to jump into talking about your thoughts on the direct? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Uh, don't mind me drinking lots of water here. Um, <laughs> hey, it's good to stay hydrated. Yeah. Especially when you're <laughs> sitting in a closet to record, so you get hot really quick sitting in here on the floor. <laughs> so it's like I need your to cool down. <laughs> daily reminder to your listeners, always stay hydrated, yeah. especially when you're in a closet recording. <laughs> yeah. Like in the beginning, I'm fine, but then once I finish, I, I like open the door and I get this this wave of cool air. I'm like, oh, wow, I was really hot. <laughs> 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 um so yeah uh what we did last episode was we kind of went in chronological order but um i guess it really doesn't matter if there's specific things about the direct that you want to talk about that excited you then go for it if you want to take it from here with your thoughts on the direct uh yeah sure so the most um my favorite announcement for sure was the Link's awakening remake oh yeah mine um, and papa Gino's. Oh, was it really? Okay, mm-hmm. I haven't watched the the, video, the episode yet, but well, there you go. It's so that game came out the same year I was born, and it was the, if I recall correctly, it was the very first game I ever played, like in my life. It was the first really? game I played on. I played it on Game Boy, like the original, without the um, like it didn't have any color or anything. It was just the original Link's Awakening, and um, so I don't know how old I was when I played it. And I remember, I it's just one of those nostalgic moments where I know it was a good game, but mm-hmm. with the nostalgia glasses, it was like the best game I've ever <laughs> played in my life. Um, and even just like after seeing this, listening to the soundtrack of the original game has got me so hyped. I just remember every track. And when I start listening to the old music, I remember like where in the game I would hear the music and I was just getting hit with nostalgia so hard. Uh, by this announcement i feel like it's so well deserved um it's not like everybody's favorite zelda game out there because there's so much competition even in the 2d world like i think a lot of people like minish cap better than Link's awakening I haven't but played minish cap and i'm kind I have an of e- waiting so for it to hopefully inevitably be released on the switch I'm- I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will at some point. And I haven't either, so I can't say like objectively that this is better than Minish Cap. I can't say that. Um, but for me personally, of the games I've played, Link's Awakening and Oracle of Seasons and Ages are among my favorite like portable handheld games I've ever played in my life, wow. for sure. Um, and I'm just so excited that this is getting a remake. I I can't say I... I called it, but I was hoping, <laughs> I was praying that this game would eventually get remade or remastered. And as soon as I saw Link on the ship in the storm, I knew exactly what was happening, and I like, yeah. I just lost it. Me too. Um, I can't say I was an, a fan of the the art like at the get go. I was kind of like, I was taken aback just a little bit, and then I think I warmed up to it. I watched the trailer a couple times over, and then once I found out that it was sort of modeled after the pictures that Link would get taken around the castle, I think, by the photographer, um, I, I really liked how that was like a pretty deep cut and how it made sense in the whole atmosphere. Wait, say that again? The the style of there, the game? Yeah, mm-hmm. there, there are some like pictures you could have taken. There's like a photographer... Yeah. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, yeah. And kind of the artwork of the photos was very similar to how Link is portrayed in the, yeah. the remake. So I like that a lot, and I I've definitely think, warmed up to it. I think what's throwing people off is in Link's Awakening, the original one, there were multiple established art styles uh, between the photographs and the actual uh, illustrations, whether in the manual or in the advertisements for the game, where he looks more like... Um, the version from A Link to the Past. And mm-hmm. as I spoke with Papaginos last week, um, and I actually commented this on, I think, uh, I think when Ash Paulson was talking about it, um, I had commented on his uh, video saying that. And then I was listening to the, the, the Game Explained podcast, and then he mentioned kind of what I had said. Um, not necessarily, I wouldn't say he, I wouldn't say he stole my idea because he, he kind of said it a little differently. So maybe he kind of had the same thoughts as me, but basically what I had established, um, 
last week, and I was talking with Pop Genos, and he kind of felt the same way, is that um, if you look at the anime opening, it's established as the A Link to the Past style, and then when you see the game, it's a different style. But story-wise, the gameplay section is in a dream, whereas the anime opening is outside the dream. So it's it's possible mm. that at some point in the beginning of the game, you switch styles once you get into the dream world. And, you know, it's very possible, though I don't know if they'll do this, but it's very possible that Marin might even say something like, because, you know, Link doesn't talk, so... Right. She, she might be like, oh, what do you mean you, you know, you look different than normal or something like that. And right there would be a dead giveaway that the style is, uh, changed because of that. And you wouldn't even need to change the, um, you wouldn't even need to make a new model for Link just for the, uh, anime style because that could just be like the opening and ending cutscene. Like you don't ever have to show, uh, in-game models for outside the dream world. So it's, just like a perfect way to explain that it's like that's the dream world of version of of uh link you know uh yeah that that is interesting yeah I, I think that makes sense lore wise yeah and um it gives the developers an excuse to try out a new art style which yeah. they've often done with 2d zelda so i think it's it's definitely going to grow on me and um mm-hmm. i mean it looks beautiful oh just, yeah like aesthetically and um i hope they have like fully orchestrated tracks on, in the game, mm. which when would it, be awesome. When it comes to Zelda, and I think I had spoken, uh, I, I had mentioned this to Alpha in a, a previous episode also, is my interpretation of the differing art styles throughout the Zelda games is that each game is kind of like being told by a different author, let's say, because it's called The Legend of Zelda. Oh, I like, I like that. That's, so that's a cool it's kind of like yeah. each legend is like a separate book by a separate author or something, like covering specific events. So it's like that's their, that's the flavor of their storytelling, you know? That's true. And a lot of the timelines like suggest that there are different links, like in a lot of the different games. So they mm. could be, yeah. Well, they so, are, but depending but on which some yeah, of them timeline overlap. you abide by. Right. It depends on which timeline you yeah. <laughs> abide by, which but one even you believe. Within but... the, even direct sequels, for, um, like, for example, the, the latest one is, or one of the latest ones is, it, you know, might be one of the only ones that I could think of off the top of my head. Or just in general, but um, the one from A Link Between Worlds is the same link as the one from Triforce Heroes. And they're completely different art styles. So that right there is an example of my personal headcanon theory of the legend of A Link Between Worlds and the legend of Triforce Heroes are like two different interpretations of the events of the series. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I like that. Yeah, I mean, like you said, that the name of the game is the legend. It's about yeah. like, telling a story, telling a myth of this, you know, mm-hmm. hero. So it makes sense that the story would be told different ways. Yeah, I mean, here's a further example of that in the lore of Zelda. When um, I think it's Link's grandma in Wind Waker, uh, uh, or perhaps just no, that's, what was was she, that's what I was remembering. That's what I was remembering when she explained the story of the hero. It was all in like um, the hieroglyphic kind of yeah the look, um, yeah what what's the word I'm looking for uh, like the stained glass window style uh huh yeah um, yeah yeah and then even with the the legends of you know um, right before breath like a hundred years or whatever before Breath of the Wild when that legend was being told they were very like hieroglyphic esque mm-hmm. um, so it's like even the the legends inside the Legend of Zelda. Uh, are told in different art styles. So why not, you know, take it a step further and say, that's why these legends <laughs> are this way. So like nobody really knows what the true art style is. Like every art style you see is the style of that legend. Mm-hmm. You know, Link, it's a beautiful head could, Link could look like, like me and you, like realistic <laughs> and we'll, we'll never know. <laughs> yeah. So. Now what? Now what's the headcan for? Why is it not called the Legend of Link? Because um, um <laughs> sorry, I'm just being because Zelda's the <laughs> Zelda's from the Hyrule. Uh, Zelda is the um, part of the royal family, and it's kind of like the legend uh, surrounding Hyrule and its hero. 
Mm -hmm. So, but mm -hmm. it, it, it does kind of beg the question of why has is a series called Legend of Zelda? <laughs> <laughs> because even when it's the first so game, much confusion. Yeah, even when <laughs> so the many... first game was created, like just think of the first game where it's like you're Link and you have to save Zelda from Ganon. Why is it called The Legend of Zelda? You don't <laughs> even play Zelda. I know. <laughs> I suppose There's so many people who think Zelda is is the guy in the green tunic. I know. You're like, no. <laughs> Gosh. I suppose that it's like um uh you know, there's this air and mystery of this character who you're you're adventuring out to save that you've never met but then it's kind of like why is the word legend thrown in there mm -hmm. which right. could go back to what i was saying where because it's 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 a retelling of events um but then why is it called zelda <laughs> you know exactly. so it's like i mean it sounds better than the legend of link but then you could have just switched the names it could be <laughs> Link, Link's, Linkus, and oh, well, Zeldor. Well, no, the second the second game is called the Adventure of Link. The event that's true. So they, they the entire series could have been they, called the Adventure of Link. Ah, yeah, Zelda to the Adventure of Link. Mm -hmm. Which arguably the doesn't worst game have in the <laughs> legend in its title anywhere. Doesn't so, so is that, is the, that true the true story? art style? Oh, <laughs> uh, that's the tr <laughs> that's, oh god, that's the that would be disappointing. I have to say, that would be very disappointing. That's not a bad <laughs> art style though. It's it's a not classic art style. Not for its time, but I I don't think Zelda belongs. Link belongs in two D side scrolling, except for the Link's Awakening parts, which were so cool. <laughs> so I take that back. <laughs> so te so here's here's the theory of here's the um game theory of the day um the ledge all the zelda adventures take place in in that 2d adventure of link style but they're all called the legend of zelda now because everybody wants to remember it differently <laughs> oh <God. laughs> that that's that's pretty good so I one like day that. we'll get the uh the legend of zelda 2 the adventure of link which will be top down and if that ever happens then that's proving my point even further. Wow, that is some deep headcanon. If we get something it. called The Legend of Zelda, uh, The Adventure of Link or something, like as a remake, and it's a top-down, which I feel like they would probably keep it as side-scrolling in, in order to like make it a new kind of thing, but if they took that and made it top-down, I'd be like, oh my god, I called it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can put your stamp on that. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. But it's not like anybody will really listen to this and be like, oh, Andrew said that, maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nobody listens to this. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. I know. Now, they're, they're, we have some dedicated listeners. We do? I only know Elamami Alpha and a couple of others. Yep. That was the, that's who I was referring to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Less than Shout five. Shout out to you. Less than five. <laughs> Less than five. Uh, so, <laughs> um, was there anything else from the direct that you wanted to talk about? Uh, yeah, there are two other games that that really piqued my interest. Um, Astral Chain looked really awesome. Which um, one was that? I, that's the one that looked like Xenoblade Chronicles Two. It had like the really like um, mech Platinum? heavy Platinum Games is doing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, that did look interesting actually. Yeah, that came out of nowhere because I, I mean, that was nowhere on anyone's mind. I think that you know, Platinum was coming out with this brand new IP. So, I think, I mean, it looks really, looks really freaking good. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I, I'd like to see more about it as far as like what the story would be. But I've seen enough of the gameplay to know like I'd <coughs> will be super hooked into that gameplay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does look pretty cool, and so I'm excited to see more about that. Uh, thoughts? I, uh, what? Uh, I was going to say, I think, I don't know, I think it said that you could play two players simultaneous, so I don't know if that means that it will for sure be cooperative, but that would be pretty cool if it mm. is. I don't know if they do split screen or how they would do that, but um, yeah, that, I'm super excited about that game. Hmm. Yeah, I, I want to see what that's all about, uh, which begs the question of where's Bayonetta 3? Yeah, I know. <laughs> that does <laughs> beg that question. 
Yeah, I'm nothing on Bayonetta. Yeah, uh, I'm wondering um, what she's going to look like, because if she doesn't look different, then it kind of goes against the reason of changing her look in the first place, which the reason of changing her look in the first place was based on, I don't know if it was the character designer or one of the game designers, whoever it was, they basically said that their, uh, not necessarily assumption, but their interpretation uh, or, you know, who they, the type of character that Bayonetta is... Is that she's someone who wouldn't keep the same look for very, very long. Like, she'd be mm -hmm. constantly changing up her look. So, unless Bayonetta 3 takes place, like, right before or after 2, then, you know, she's she needs a different look. look different. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I mean, we have a trend already forming. She started with uh, pretty very long hair, and then it, it's short hair. Is she going to be bald in Bayonetta 3? <laughs> no, I think they're just going with different <laughs> hairstyles, because Jean grew her hair out. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, true. They sw switch places, but yeah. I don't know. I'm calling it right now. Bayonetta 3 released in November 2019, and she will be bald. I, well, <laughs> I hope the first part that comes out this year. I, that's what they're saying, right? And I think Nintendo like made an I official hope... claim that it's coming later this year, but I don't know. Oh, maybe I missed that. Uh, I thought they did. It's pretty recent. I hope but... they did, because I want to play it, man. <laughs> I, I'm a fan of the Bayonetta series. I know yeah, Alpha... I think Alpha doesn't like it. I, I I'm not exactly sure why. I can't speak for him, but I, <laughs> I think, love it. <laughs> I think I'm not going to speak for, for him, but I know we've talked in the past about just being upset that she was a character in Smash and like took the place of yeah, well, or not took the place, but instead of like someone like Sora or someone who could yeah. be like more deserving. But yeah, um, I think in a, a past episode he had mentioned something like um, he's not interested so much in like the serious and mature themes in games um which is why he he likes games like um mario and pokemon and stuff and again yeah. i don't want to speak for him but i think that he had already established that and that's why i'm saying that uh, so I, I I'm, I'm not like the same way. really throwing it's, words it's in his mouth i think he actually said that if not he could correct me or somebody else could correct me but the reason i was saying that was because i think he had said that so yeah. um which well, which makes sense um, I'm into all different types of styles. Uh, my main, one, one of the main draws for me in a game is lore, and Bayonetta is rife with lore. So I, I love the lore that they build up between, um, Paradiso. Is it pronounced Diso or Dico? Uh, you, you would know more than me. <laughs> I just forget. Cause it's, it, yeah. it's like the Latin word. It's from, uh, like Dante's Inferno. I think Italian, not Latin. I don't know. Whatever. Um, so it's, <laughs> it's based on Inf Dante's Inferno. So you got Inferno and it's either Paradiso or DCO. I have to double check. Um, the thing that throws me off is the way the universe is set up in Bayonetta is there's three worlds that overlap or there's not necessarily over. There's three like planes of existence and then they're all connected by a fourth plane called Purgatorio. Um, so there's Inferno, which is kind of like hell, Paradiso, which is kind of like heaven, and then the human world. So it's like, why does the human world not have a fancy name? <laughs> you know, <laughs> they, they actually, they refer to it as, uh, chaos. So why is there not a fancy, like, chaos? It's like Inferno, Paradiso, chaos. And, um, I remember looking up the Latin or Italian word for chaos, and it fit so perfectly with the other two, uh, like Inferno and Paradiso, where it's like, it ends with the O. I just forget what it's called. And I was like, oh, they should just call it that. It makes sense. Ah. <laughs> uh, lost. Yeah, that was a lost opportunity, it sounds like. Um, yeah. I'm trying to look up what the word could be, but. Yeah, me um, too. <laughs> I can't find it. <laughs> um, Chaos is chaos. KO for Latin. But I don't know. <laughs> and, was it Inferno? Uh, yeah, check check Italian. It might Inferno, be Italian. Italian or Latin? No, it's chaos in <laughs> in Italian as well without the the H. Um, so maybe they just didn't have a better way to say it. <laughs> uh, okay, so etymology um, from Italian inferno uh, is hell, and from Latin infernus, which means of the lower regions and. Uh, Inferno. So Inferno. So I guess Inferno. It's uh, Italian. So you would need the Italian. 
for chaos. Whoops, I spelled that wrong. But yeah, so in C A O S. Yeah, that's that's what I'm getting. So I saw, it seems like I it's saw just... something else <laughs> once before. Well, Italian translation of chaos. We'll have to, we'll have to look later. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think I had seen a tra- I don't know if this is it, but um, this is probably not it. But I just saw this word, lo scompiglio. Hmm. Which I don't. Which means confusion, disarray, mess, chaos, muddle, hurly burly. So I can see it being called Scumpiglio or something along that line. Or, or hurly burly. That's a <laughs> that's a missed opportunity Inferno. right there. Inferno, Eridiso, <laughs> hurly burlyo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hurly burlyo. Because <laughs> like the first, I mean, now it, I really want to play Bayonetta. It takes play because I mean, you Bayonetta is of the chaos world or hurly burlyo. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so the set, the first game focuses on um, Paradiso and fighting the angels of Paradiso or DCO. Damn it! I, I sh- you know I'm I gotta double check this because I don't want to be saying the wrong word. <laughs> Paradiso or Paradiso? Paradiso. <laughs> okay, it's Paradiso. Nice. Unless that's just. Paradiso were a Belgian Eurodance group, so maybe that's the wrong thing. Shoot. There's a parody- Paradiso. Um, the, the, the Paradiso Festival is an annual electronic dance music festival. What's with all the dance? Wow. <laughs> oh, here you go. Paradiso is Italian for heaven, literally paradise. Uh, well, so yeah, God Paradiso. So now I am calling it Paradiso. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. so it's like the the first game kind of focuses on fighting the angels of Paradiso, and and the second game, while you know, continues focusing on that because Bayonetta, uh, as as a witch, sided with the you know making contracts with the demons of Inferno. It does include uh, Inferno. So both um, the angels and demons are present in the game. So you actually get to <laughs> visit Inferno in, in the sequel. Um, so yeah, I guess the third cool game though. could focus on just staying in Hurly Burlio. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. I would, I would definitely pick it up if that's the case. <laughs> Although but the yeah, second that's... game also has a focus in, in Hurley Burlio, so, uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> and it, it does seem like Bill Trinan said something about it coming this year, so hopefully that's the case. It should have Don't... the subtitle of Hurley Burlio. <laughs> Don't let us down, Bill. Bill. Bill, 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 Bill. Bill Trinan, the Nintendo guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um or if you're familiar with, are, are you familiar with Dragon Ball? Do you, I mean, do you watch Dragon Ball oh, Super? Yeah, yeah I, I watched a ton I of Dragon Ball. I was trying to think Super. of what would rhyme instead of guy, and I thought of Ningen, which is like Japanese for human or mortal. And and I know that thanks to Zamasu's, um, Zamasu constantly calling people Ningen. Oh, wow, like, I forgot about that. Like, yeah. Oh, Ningen. Or just, I mean, not in, not that it's a bad word for it, but just it's like, he, I just remember him constantly saying that word. Like, I remember that word being brought up a lot. So, it's like, Bill Trinan, the, the Nintendo Ningen. <laughs> the Ningen guy. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, 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 Bill Trinan, the Nintendo Ningen. Bill, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Man, That's now great. I'm torn between two titles for this episode. Uh, Hurley Burlio <laughs> and, and Bill Trinan, the Nintendo... The Nin- uh, the Ningen guy, there are, there are a lot of good ones. Okay. Well, you'll have to re you'll have to re listen and uh, pick and the see best. what sounded better. We'll have to pull the audience and uh, whatever Elamoni Alpha says, we'll pick Goes. it. <laughs> it's like this episode is called Elamoni Alpha is God because that's what he said. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, we can't make it that open ended. There'll be like a set of like four titles you can pick from. <laughs> Mm. But um, speaking of the community, uh, I did reach out to one of the people in the past who wanted to be a guest on the show. Right. Um, so he was actually 
going to be on last episode, but we weren't able to figure out a schedule because he's in, I think, the UK, so it's like a diff as a different time zone. When we usually record around 6.30ish, it's like really late for, for him over there. So Yeah, yeah, I could see that. We'd have to figure something out, even if it's just me and him and I could schedule something earlier in a day. But it'd be nice to, like I had already said, or like way early on, that it'd be nice to bring people from the community on who'd like to um, participate here and there. Yeah, especially if they're from the UK. Yeah. Well, you're in the, <laughs> are you in the UK? What? Are you in the UK? No, no, no. I'm in North Carolina. Oh, because I was gonna say, wait, with, it's not that my late buddy for Alpha. You. <laughs> Chris and I are representing the deep south over here. I'm more <laughs> south than you right now. It, but you, you but I'm not Florida, from right? the South. <laughs> That's so right, yeah. I'm a, yeah. I've been here, like, a few months, so I don't feel very South. Yeah, it takes a while for it to hit you. It, it takes I mean, a while to hit well, I'm just going to wake <laughs> up one day. Talk, yeah, you know, one, day, one day you'll wake up and you'll realize you've been changed. I was going to attempt, like, a poor accent, but then I didn't want to offend anyone. So it's so like, yeah. Florida, do Floridians have an accent? I don't think so. I don't really think so. Yeah, I think a lot of. I also yeah. don't really pick up on accents as well as maybe some other people do, unless they're really clear. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think I have an accent, but people say I have a New Jersey accent. And then I'm like, yeah, really? That's what people have told me. Because, you know, I'm from New Jersey originally as well. Oh, well, when did you so, move from New Jersey? When did I move? Mm -hmm. uh, like four years ago. Okay, well, not only that, but did your family move to North Carolina, um, or just you? Yeah, they, they, no, they've moved south as well. We've all we've all moved south. Okay, because I was gonna say it's either because you have mostly been in New Jersey, or because your you know your family was so you picked on up on the New Jersey accent from them, or both. But since it's been like four years ago, you, I guess you still kept that accent. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's Apparently, long enough. I don't hear I don't hear an accent because I don't know what New Jersey accent sounds like. But um, yeah, that, that's so interesting to me that that's the case for any accent, like mm -hmm. Australian, British, whatever accent. That's just that's what you perceive as normal. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, um, before we go, because we got about ten ish 12 ish minutes um so i guess i'll hit up with el Mamni alpha's comments what if that Ooh, makes sense the way i just worded that hit up with, yeah let's hit it up let's hit up with um <laughs> let's hit up with some hurly burly o comments mm, but hurly burly -o. Uh, so el Mamni alpha writes uh a day ago uh the direct had rune factory so it's an 11 out of 10 it oh i be... remember yeah i remember um he was a big fan of that game when I talked about Stardew, Stardew Valley... Yeah, he had um, told... Um, in, in the last episode, when I read his comment, um, he actually said to Papaginos, so Papaginos got to hear it. He said, play Rune Factory, Papa. It's better, Stardew Valley. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's what he... He commented, and he told me the same thing. Yeah, and I, I, I think the last Rune Factory game I played was either 3 or 4. So I'm mm -hmm. excited that 4 is coming to the Switch, and then 5 is you know, in development. Because I do have fond memories of it, and I think it was the best like Harvest Moon has ever done. Mm -hmm. And I know nothing about them. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pumped about it. Um, yep, yeah, and I know nothing, but, but that's <laughs> cool. <laughs> and you can get married, so it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> There's that nice. aspect. Something as well. you can't do in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Or yeah, or something you'd rather not. Yeah, things that have more negatives than positives. I liked getting married in Fart Emblem. Um, yeah, that's I actually. Of... I think that's a that that's like a thing that a lot of people don't like was the whole married and having kids thing. But I I actually liked it as well. Well, here's the thing. Um, what I I would like to see, I would like to see a, a story kind of centered around you being. Like kind of making your own character and being able to get married and have kids, but that not being the focus of the story. Like you're, yeah, you know, you it. have like God. your adventure, or whatever, but you can marry like one of your party members and you can have kids. Um, again, not being a focus of the story, but kind of putting more weight to your um, 
your uh, party members and how important they are to you, and perhaps maybe uh, actually involving them in the story down the line of like where if their life becomes in danger, you kind of become more attached to that party member. You're like, oh, that's the one I married, you know? Um, yeah. And yeah. Uh, actually maybe like building, like having some, whether it's building elements or, because there's got to be some kind of elements of customization if you, if they, if you want to involve you personally with a, um, party member, but, um, you know, the whole idea of like building a home and stuff like that, uh, just some more customization in that would be cool. And, um, mm-hmm. being able to do stuff, cause like in Fire Emblem, obviously the marriage aspect was not the focus of the story, so it didn't need this. But what I would like to see in a game that might have that more heavily focused, um, would probably be, to be able to actually do things like if you're walking around like your town, maybe your, your party member might follow you or something, you know, like just like uh-huh. little, little things that, you know, maybe you can interact more. Um, and again, that's not the point of Fire Emblem. So, you know, it doesn't need that. And if it had that, it kind of wouldn't be Fire Emblem. But, um, unless that's just like well. a very small part of, of the overall story. Um, but I would love to see that implemented in a, in a, like any game, like a new game series or something. Yeah. And I think if, as long as like you're saying, it doesn't become a central part of the game. It's just kind of right. like an add on. And like, like you I can think... focus as much time as you want on it. Cause it's a sure. side thing. And three houses looks like it has like that hub world where you can kind of like move around a little bit. Yeah. I don't, I don't think, you know, since you're a teacher and everything, I don't think they're going the marriage route. Um, mm-hmm. cause like if you, unless you're marrying one of your students, which you know, <laughs> is, <laughs> I don't know about that. But I mean, uh, if they're uh, over eighteen, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, whatever like, part of the world you're in, because I think the age of consent varies depending on where you are. So, mm-hmm. but here in America, well, well, it's eighteen. <laughs> so yeah. So I don't know if that's what they're if that's what they meant by the tutoring tab in the in the gameplay. I'm not sure, but yeah, uh, they would probably <laughs> adjust it to make it sound normal. Yeah, <laughs> like, um, I don't know this for certain, but I thought the age of consent was much lower in in Japan, and which would make s- if that was the case, it would make sense as to why there's a lot of younger characters involved in some lewd things sometimes. Um, but I can imagine that if that was ever the case, they would adjust the age to be like eighteen or something. You know, and yeah, say a young I'm not sure. Character. But as so. long as I have a sword, an axe, and a lance, and give me an army. Send me in. <laughs> yeah. An army of children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> give me an army of children. <laughs> I will <laughs> conquer the world <laughs> with an iron fist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a hard sell for uh, <laughs> but to get would, married. But it would have buyers. <laughs> Everything would have a buyer, no matter what it is. Somebody wants like somebody will want it no matter what it is um <laughs> doesn't necessarily mean it'll sell well but somebody out there will buy it you'll sell at least one I'm copy sure. of any idea <laughs> even <laughs> if it's so bad that they wind up returning it <laughs> um get, so, right. so let's see uh he says surprised there was so little on smash though i wonder if we're getting a smash direct around 3.0's launch otherwise why would they <clears throat> just have a tease and not just tell us what's in it if there's no reveal later? Uh, a standard direct in April seems too soon with another one also being needed at E3. Yeah, it was, you know, what are, you, what are your thoughts on the, the Smash portion of the, um, the direct? Do you feel like, um, I kind of felt like for yeah. for Smash being such a huge game and usually like a quote-unquote selling point of directs. Uh, and I say quote-unquote because it's not like they're selling directs, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, right. I feel like it was a bit underwhelming for how huge of a title it is. But then again, if they really didn't have much to show, I can understand why. And it would make sense to show it right off the get-go so people aren't expecting like a reveal at the end. Um, hmm. So from that from that sense of like not having anything to show, I understand like showing it up front, but it's just kind of like almost like underwhelming because of how it's always been built up in directs. 
Sure. Yeah, I think it was pretty, sh- certainly shorter than Smash has gotten in the past. Like, I think they only got like a 40 second excerpt on this yeah. mysterious update, which was definitely oddly um, lacking in the details compartment. Um, so <laughs> I, I think that I think it definitely leaves room. I, I don't know that they're necessarily like not complete with some things or they're still working on some things. So it leads me to believe that it's a rather large update. So like more than just um, Joker, like some kind of mode or something or new stages or something that's a little bit bigger that they're just not leading on right now. Um, And it's doing so well, like the momentum's there that they don't really have to talk about it anymore right now. So I think they'll wait till April to do like a mini direct or some like uh, press release thing that they like that they can divulge more information later on. Maybe as the game starts to lose a little bit of momentum, but right now it's like it's massive, so they don't need to release any more. I think. Do you think April would be a good time for a Smash Direct? Um, I think April, like April first, would be a great time. <laughs> <laughs> Because, yeah. hey, you know, April Fool's Day, Joker, telling yeah, jokes. Yeah, you're right. It kind of work out. I maybe. don't know anything about Joker. Does he tell jokes? Um, I, I don't. Maybe. <laughs> oh, do you, oh, you don't play Persona? I no, thought you I, said I, you did. Maybe I, I had a Q2. Else. I had a Q2, but uh, it's right. been a while since I played it. So. Um. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about Persona, as I established in this episode. Um, <laughs> and probably <laughs> in this one, I guess. I don't, I don't know if it's... I don't know. I mean, I asked you if he told jokes, so obviously I don't know anything. <laughs> um, so, top five things from the direct for me. And this is El Mami Alpha talking, not me. So, number one is Rune Factory 5. Number two is Astral okay. Chains. Number three is a Rune Factory 4 Special. Number four is Hollow Knight Silk Song. I know it came out the 14th, but I'm still count- counting it. <laughs> and number five, Link's Awakening Remake. So, um, is this Hollow Knight Silk Song? Is that... I don't know anything about Hollow Knight, um, but I always hear about it. Is this like a bonus to it? I don't even remember it in the direct. Um, um I think Silk Song was the sequel to it, right? So I think sequel? it's like the sec. I think it's a straight up like second game. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the first. I mean, the first one did super well, and I, I'm definitely it's on my list to buy. I know it's mm-hmm. like a it's a steal already at the price because there's so much content. So I'm How just gonna pull the trigger one day. How much is it? Uh gosh, I want to say it's either like ten or fifteen. Mm. Um, See, I gotta I, finish Kingdom Hearts three, and then I gotta play the DLC that they added in Resident Evil two, and then I might continue fooling around with both games. But then I'm also still playing Monster Hunter World. They added, they actually added in, um, um, the Witcher three um collaboration. And so they have... Oh, you were talking about that, yeah. Yeah, so until March 1st, so for me it's going to be earlier because I'm taking a trip up to New Jersey on the 27th, Uh, so I'm not bringing my PS4 with me. (laughs) Um, But up until March 1st, they have this um, special event where you fight an even more powerful um, version of the monster that they have in the special assignment that you can replay whenever you want, uh, which is a, a lesson. So, I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with Witcher at all. I'm not, but I, at least I know what this monster is now because I fought it. Um, it's like yeah. it's like a humanoid-esque creature. Uh, and uh, so there's a nine-star event quest, which is, I think, the highest difficulty at the moment. Um, unless there's a ten-star that I don't know of uh, or never unlocked. But it's a really difficult mission where you have to fight what's called an Ashen Lechen. Uh, and it's just... Boy. <laughs> <laughs> You're in for it. Yeah. yeah. Well, me being like a super pure Nintendo fan, I haven't played the Witcher series, but mm-hmm. um, man, it's it's always been so highly talked about among my friends. And I always listen to the soundtrack when I'm like studying or something, because it's so, for the Witcher? so darn good. Yeah, so darn good. You know what... I would like I would like your opinion on a soundtrack listening to. Listen to the soundtrack of the first Dark Souls, unless you have. It's very like not that there's I guess sometimes I think there's sometimes voices in it, like orchestral, but it's very like 
I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. Not maybe not fanciful, but like an orchestra. I don't know how to print. I don't know how to explain it, but <laughs> it has good ambiance. Yeah, <laughs> atmospheric. Kind of, and, you know, maybe it's some of them aren't good to study too. Then, because uh, some of them get intense for like boss fights and stuff. But some of them, or at least no, that's one, good. I like that. <laughs> yeah, at least one in particular is very like relaxed. Mm-hmm. Um, so cool. a lot yeah, of times check, yeah. when I draw or do something artwork, um, I I just pop on the Dark Souls soundtrack. Nice. I yeah, that probably get the Demon Souls soundtrack and Dark Souls Two soundtrack and Bloodborne soundtrack. I just never did because uh, <laughs> I I have the Dark Souls soundtrack because uh, the time it came out, I got the special edition. It was included, um, and I just never wind up getting the other ones. But sometimes they'll just pop that in. And, like, listen to the music, and it's just, like, pretty cool to just listen to that in the background. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So before we finish up, I just want to finish up his comment uh, where he says, This direct made me question whether or not Erdrick is coming to Smash, as it would make sense, uh, was as it would make the most sense to reveal him here with everything. Oh, with uh, the Dragon Quest Everything, things. yeah, with everything Dragon Quest that was shown. And... I didn't necessarily notice that at first, but then when I yeah uh, I was kind of expecting yeah I think because uh, I read his comment when he posted it uh, a day ago, so I know that I thought about this before today. So you know that that is a really good point. Um, if we were going to get Erdrick or any uh, Dragon Quest character for that matter. Um, and I, and I guess you could say the same thing about Fire Emblem with like Edelgard or the main hero. Um, the this direct yeah. would have been the perfect time to announce the the character. So it's, yeah, so I know. yeah, I actually think I mean it it could be, but there's a lot more room I think to announce like more details about Dragon Quest stuff, like whether it be like old remasters or collections or stuff, because I think they're going all out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think there's plenty of you know Builders Two comes out I think in July this year and then yeah but they you know, spoke uh, about that in the direct yeah yes yeah, so, but uh, but still there's time like before it comes out like before it's released on the Switch so I think there's still mm. like room that they could announce Erdrick if that's the case it would be best if they did it in this direct and I was kind of expecting they would but I don't think it's like he's totally out because he wasn't announced today. Mm-hmm. So, but I still question I, I, it because I, it would have been like a perfect opportunity. It would have been perfect. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I in a in a way, sure. But I and I don't I don't really want Erdrick as a character to be honest because I'm not super attached to the Dragon Quest series. Like I would Same. much prefer Sora yeah. over. Um, and I think a lot of us agree. Like I know Papa, um, I know like Alpha and you agree with that. Yeah. And that's um, not to say that I don't think he's deserving of it because Dragon Quest was on, it's, um, you know, it's just it, me it, personally, I'm not attached to the character. So I would personally prefer a different character. Yeah. But I can understand Erdrick being in the game because Dragon Quest, I believe, is deserving of being represented in Smash mm-hmm. in some form. And that was just, like me with. Yeah, that was like me with Joker because I'm not like strongly attached to the character. I was excited for everybody who was like really attached to him and excited. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, it's just like, oh, you know, he looks cool. Probably will play kind of kind of cool, maybe like Sheik or something. But yeah. um, so Erdrick would have the same impact on me. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, Papa Genos and I were kind of in agreement um, with the idea of assuming that this this wave of DLC was planned before the release of the game and um, maybe assuming that we're going to get future fighter passes. It sounds like this first pass is not going to have any spirits as DLC because they were probably put into the game with the idea of them not being playable in mind, but maybe a future fighter pass like a fighter pass two might include characters that are spirits um, because it's after the fact. Oh, I I definitely think that's the case because, like, it would be super easy to just move a spirit from the spirit list to the fighter spirits. Like, that would be so or easy to do. Or just both, really. Yeah, I, but just to be clean, like, have all the Geno spirits, like, in the fighter, you know, just move mm-hmm. it over. Like, it would be so easy to do that. So I, I, I'm still under the impression that, sure, maybe this first round... 
um, yeah. that it would eliminate them from being a character. But in if they did a future, I think a future fighter pass, I think I totally agree with you guys that yeah. that's definitely possibility so yeah i am not really expecting any spirits to be dlc fighters in fighter pass one no nope. um, i think i think they're going to be all third party i'm almost certain yeah especially that you know hearing that rare spirits were found in the code i'm expecting something from microsoft whether it's steve unfortunately uh. Uh, or or <laughs> well it i feel like it makes uh. more sense to have a rare character if rare spirits were found but then again, rare spirits might be found just for the sake of they were on Nintendo platforms, or some of them, um, just like they did with Square. Like, you what? know, do <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, watch it. Watch it be Conquer is the uh, yeah. the guy we get. <laughs> well, I would love. I would freaking that. love Conquer to be. A... I'd be fine with that. That'd be uh, so I, great. I think Banjo Kazooie are more deserving with how big they are, but um, yeah, I, I, just... I would prefer Conquer over Steve. Oh, for I sure. do think Steve sure. would be a perfect me costume, though. Like, yes, I really I... do think that, um, like, I would be surprised that if Steve wasn't playable, I'd be surprised that he's not a me costume because I really feel like he fits that so perfectly. Mm -hmm. You know, I agree. Yeah, I think he would definitely be best fit. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it, it, like, <sighs> Steve really, <laughs> 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 like, even the name is so just blah <laughs> yeah it's just so like there's not like any it's just an avatar which you yeah, can say but that you can argue and everything. that about yeah me's and um fire emblem avatar but you know at least fire emblem avatar is like well, part of a great uh grand story and, yeah and it's nintendo based like mm -hmm. if you're talking about third parties like i feel like you need to have Oh, this is a whole, you know, it's a whole argument mm. we can get into about Minecraft. I mean, Minecraft, of course, is like one of the biggest, do, it's biggest selling games ever. I do have so. to say, I don't know anything about Minecraft, so I could be completely off the mark about it. But, are, I mean, are you familiar with Minecraft? Oh, I, play, I played it, like, on occasion. Okay, so um, at least you have a little bit more merit <laughs> with talking about it. Mm-hmm. Well, so. yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, I really do think that Steve should be me a me outfit. Like I think he fits it like way better than character. Yeah, just give Steve and throw in the the female what a, it's uh, what is it Alex or something? Just Steve and Alex. Just yeah, throw them as skins. Great, great and skins that's... for me characters. Right. And I wouldn't mind if possible seeing like a couple of uh, a couple of um. Microsoft skins, but like they probably make the most sense. And if we got like a Banjo and Kazooie as a character, like maybe it'd, maybe we would see like Conquer as, as a me skin too. So it's like three me outfits and Banjo Kazooie or something like that. Yeah, Conquer like, that would be makes a great, sense. great uh, me gunner yeah. costume. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> just having like a machine gun or something. I mean, yeah, <laughs> good. Did he have a sword in? In the game at all? I'm sure he did. Uh, at some point because that game, uh, Bad Fur Day, went all over the place. God, I think so. Actually, I think in the he had a katana. He had a katana. Yeah, I remember. yeah, I remember. I yes. specifically remember. He's like, oh That's yeah, what, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. I remember the sword. Yeah, there was that. there was swords. Yeah, uh, swords yeah. and so he guns. could be a sword. He could be everything. Yeah. He and he could definitely be a brawler as well, so... Obviously, he could they just... wouldn't give him a cigar, but, you know... Ah, oh, please. <laughs> oh, there's an old uh, League of Legends joke about Graves not having a cigar, <laughs> or <laughs> something about that. Give Conker a cigar. Justice for Conker. <laughs> <laughs> Justice for Conker? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of, like, a catchy hashtag for for giving Conker a cigar. I can't think of one. Uh, Justice for Conquer. <laughs> Justice for Conquer. That's pretty good. Oh. Cigar. Conquer. <laughs> I mean, they both start with C. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> Cigar for Conquer. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but yeah, was there anything else you want to talk about before you go? Well, before we um, go, but I know you no. gotta go. That's why I said before you go. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now's a good time. So, um, the only other thing I was gonna say was uh, the new Square game, uh, Onanaki. 
Um, that looked really cool. If people were interested in the game, there's a bit more gameplay out there in like a separate announcement trailer that was released that wasn't shown in the direct. So if you want to like see a little bit more of the gameplay, uh, watch that. Um, and I'm super excited that Square is doing a whole bunch of stuff. You know, we had Octopath last summer. Now we're going to have Onanaki this summer. And I kind of, part of me wishes it was Switch exclusive since I'm such a Nintendo fanboy, but I understand why it's not. Um, but that game looked really cool. Mm-hmm. And the I only other thing, it. it was like super short. Yeah, they did like a minute and a half or something like that. It was like an action RPG kind of like looked like Secret of Mana kind of uh, gameplay. Mm-hmm. So so that I think that's going to be really good. Um, the things I wanted in the direct that I that I'm hoping we'll get eventually, um, Kingdom Hearts uh, collection like 1.5 or 2.5 uh, and 2.5, um, Pikmin I Four. See that. I, I want to see. see. Yeah, so because I don't think Kingdom Hearts Three is coming anytime soon, but yeah. some kind of like collection would be awesome. Um, Pikmin Four, we know it's in development. I just like want to see it, um, <laughs> and then I want to see a new Paper Mario in the style of like the original and Thousand Year Door. That's like my number one most wanted game. Um, now that Link's Awakening's got a remake, so come on, Paper Mario, that's my <laughs> next big one. <laughs> yeah, if we're talking about games we'd like to see in future directs, uh, I want to see Bayonetta Three, which I suppose. We'll eventually see. Eventually. Um, hey, I, I think it'll be coming sooner than we... Maybe we'll see it by uh, E3. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. I think it's going to be a big E3 title, yes. Which makes me wonder if she does have a yeah. new look, if we're going to get that as Smash a costume skin. in Smash. Smash skins. Yeah, that would be really At cool. At least for her, because it would make sense to promote her new game. Yep. Especially yeah, yeah. for somebody who maybe doesn't play like from the perspective which i don't really see i mean there's got to be people who play ba- are going to play bayonetta 3 before smash but but for people I, yeah. who but for for those far and few between people who who are going to play bayonetta 3 and haven't played smash yet it'd be kind of like hey you know you recognize this character from bayonetta 3 which for some reason you haven't played the first two. <laughs> so well, here you go. Season well, a lot more one. people own a Switch uh, than yeah, but Cause... Bayonetta one and two are on the Switch. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Sorry, I was thinking like the original yeah, releases. True. Um, but yeah, so that's a really cool idea though. Bayonetta three is announced during E three, and then they like transition to that costume being available in Switch and uh, Smash as like a DLC like and then that introduces costume DLC which we've been talking about for months that has to be a thing they could capitalize on that so well I mean I can't I could see them not doing it and being confused as to why not because yeah it's that's perfect what I... <laughs> yeah. yeah and I'm I, also I think... wondering what the color if any what color scheme we're going to see for Bayonetta 3 because the first one was very red the red second and one was blue. blue and so green I, yeah, I was calling. thinking green, but I wouldn't be surprised or, if they oh, made it purple. Or purple. Yeah, I was going to say, isn't the logo kind of like purpley? I don't so. remember, but I think it was. So I Oh, no, I just looked it up. Yeah. It's it's very purple. Okay, so, so we're... Yeah, <laughs> she's going to probably have something purple. Purple, purple guns, purple gem, uh, purple everything. Purple hair, maybe. Maybe that's the change. She got a purple strand in her hair. I mean, that'd be cool. I don't know if cool is part of her character design. So usually it's like fanciful sexy. But um Hey, I purple is sexy too. <laughs> yeah, you know, I guess it depends <laughs> on the clothing. Because I guess right off the bat I would think of like a like a punk, even though like this day and age it's not really related to being a punk anymore. Like a lot of people change their hair color. But I think there's like an old stigma to it and base depending on who's doing the character design and how old they are. You know, I don't know if they would. I really don't know. But but if there was purple in her hair or some color, it would be cool to see that incorporated into um, uh, the way she weaves her hair. Like seeing like that purple thrown in there. Mm-hmm. Or like even in her outfit, if she has like a purple stripe going down like her back, for example. Yeah, that I could definitely see that. Because her outfit is part of her Like is her hair. Like right, technically, right. she's not wearing any clothes. <laughs> Or if she is, it's very few. Like, she has the earrings and whatnot, but technically she's not really wearing any clothes. Um, that's gonna... all her hair. <laughs> so uh, that's a, You definitely have to put that, like, face, the meme face <laughs> in that when you... <laughs> that would be right. a really good... 
you know the meme I'm talking about with the face that's like suggestive. <laughs> mm, I I think I would know it if if I saw it, but yes, otherwise yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Someone posted in the comments, so you can make it as a YouTube comment. <laughs> oh, okay. I just um, okay. Yeah, <laughs> you'll, when you see it, you'll you'll know. You'll see it, but. Okay. Um, I like that we made a lot of predictions in this video. I'm yeah. hoping that some of them come true. At least one, right? At least one. At least one. <laughs> I would hope so. Gosh, we probably made like at least ten predictions. So, mm. well, I'm gonna be listening to it again as I edit this, um, and I have to decide on a, on a title name. <laughs> so, we'll, well see. Well, I think there are a lot of choices. <laughs> there are, but I don't know what's the best one. I'm just gonna mm. leave it as open-ended title <laughs> it's like blank i think i still think hurley burlio or whatever whatever it was is the, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's definitely the front runner in my mind but. i like hurley burlio but i feel like it needs to be like something something hurley burlio or mm. like dante's hurley burlio <laughs> i don't know um, uh, what was the other one we were talking about oh no remembered and forgot because yeah. i was just thinking it oh i don't know uh cred well anyway, well, well I'll, I'll know it when i listen to this again well as long as you recorded this we uh yeah. <laughs> we have oh access my god it's not recording <laughs> yeah it's recording <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> all right well i guess um I guess that's it. Uh, as always, if you give my comic Spear Legends a follow, I will give you a shout out. Um, and if I miss it, you could tell me in the comments that you followed it, but you can't be lying because I'll double check. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, all the links and everything are in the description below. Um, you don't have any other new links, right? They're all the same. I just have Wreck It Ryan on YouTube and Wreck It Ryan sixty four on Twitter, and uh, one of these days I'll I'll make videos again. <laughs> I was just gonna ask you, have you, have you made anything new? But um, <laughs> no, you said you're gonna be making no. probably D and D stuff, right? Yeah, that was my hope. So yeah. hopefully I'll get back into that. It's just um, it's it takes a lot of it. Honestly, if you're not a content creator, it's I I've never realized how much time it takes to make a video. So mm. um, well, I unfortunately, kind of have a little bit of an idea. Because I do this weekly. But... Oh, you do, you do, yeah, yeah. I'm but saying, it like, doesn't who, like, yeah. I I never understood, like, because I listened to you. I was never making videos until like up to two years ago, and um, I did not know how much time it takes to edit everything, and it's crazy to add this like mm -hmm. music and stuff. So, um, I definitely a lot of respect to all the you know everybody out there who makes videos, including yourself. But um, yeah, I was a little disappointed because a Mine's lot of my new like stuff. Audio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's a little bit easier that way but still yeah. it's like it still takes time to upload and everything yeah it does but um yeah my newer stuff hasn't been getting a lot of views so it's kind of a little disheartening because i because i used I to get a lot of feeling. stuff when i did um you know all the shante stuff mm -hmm. uh, that's how i started um well but... here's my question to the to anybody listening and comment if uh you know your opinion but one of the ideas we had that we have to figure out how we would do it is streaming um, a D&D &D campaign uh, and getting some people involved, whether it's Papa Genos or Alpha or anyone else, as long as they have the time to do it. Uh, is that something you guys would be interested in? Um, would you want to see that uh, live on YouTube? Um, any ideas yeah, for comments. what you would like to see? us uh you know this crew like our crew like doing if not if not D, &D like is there anything you want to see us do like if we get some ideas from you guys um that that would be helpful too but Definitely. yeah one of the ideas was doing a D, D campaign that we had some ideas for i kind of like presented the story to you guys that you liked so um mm -hmm. you guys meaning uh ryan and alpha but um we would all need the time and alpha's been super busy uh i I don't know what, yeah, what he's too. got going on. <laughs> Again, I can't speak for him, but I know, and, and you are finishing up school. I know that. Um, so I know everybody's been pretty busy, so it, it would be difficult to commit now, but we can always kind of be like, you know, n if we know the day of, it can be like, oh, tonight we're going to be doing this. And, you know, um, and then the next time we have, we don't have to schedule necessarily when we're going to do it, but any viewers will know, like, the morning of or the afternoon of the day that we're going to meet, you know, going mm -hmm. live in such and such hours, you know. 
Right. So it wouldn't yeah, have to like be like a weekly. It, yeah, it wouldn't have to be a weekly scheduled thing, but you know, just when everybody's available, then the viewers would know like the day of, see, so like yeah. tune in that night or something, which I yeah. think would be a lot of fun. We would just I have to so figure that out. Leave <laughs> comments, people. Comment. We yeah. read the comments. <laughs> we do. Uh, I do. Um, I read all one or two of them. <laughs> um, Tell your uh, friends. Yeah, if if you guys have ideas for the campaign as well, I'd love you know that'd be cool to get some, you know, to get the community involved um, in helping build the campaign. Yeah, or we if you want to like guest, if people in the community yeah. want to guest play or something, yeah, like you a, could definitely a guest take every control. episode who yeah who take will control maybe, of like an NPC or yeah, something and maybe play they'll a character. die at the end or <laughs> or like <laughs> um, return to their village at the end of the campaign, like maybe. Maybe, like, we have a mission to escort them somewhere. So, like, I mean, I feel like El Mami Alpha would have dibs because he's been commenting on everything. Um, but that that even opens the doors for some of the other community members who wanted to join in the podcast. Um, yeah. Uh, they they can pop in on the D&D stream and take control of an NPC. And, like, maybe we would have a mission to escort such and such to such and such place and at the end of the episode they were successfully escorted and you know that's that they played or their not <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> well that would be up for the dungeon master to decide yeah I well, that's that's gonna be you right uh i thought it was well that's one thing we have to figure out because oh, you have well. experience with it and i don't but if i know what to do i could um i also want to have a character based on the lore that I kind of presented to you guys. Um, but I suppose, can a dungeon master have a character? Yes, they're called DMPCs. They're, uh, it's a little bit tricky, but you ca you definitely can have your own character. Okay. Yep. Alright, well, it's something, we, if, if we wind up doing, we can figure out, and I'm excited for it, and I know that you sounded excited about it, so, yeah. Um, I guess that's it. Um, anything else? And that's it. Alrighty. Okay, then. Everybody, talk to you maybe next... Actually, um... Next week. Yeah, next week I think I'll be here, but the fo following week, I don't know because I'm not going to have my mic with me and I'm going to be in New Jersey. Um, so, unless like, you and Alpha maybe want to host an episode without me, um, and then you can always send me the recording or something and I can figure it out, but... I don't know. We'll see. Um, Alrighty. That's that. Sounds yeah, good. we'll figure it out. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> everybody. All catch right. you later. Bye. Bye, everyone. As so. long as I have a sword, an axe, and a lance, and give me an army. Send me in. <laughs> yeah, an army of children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Give me an army of children! <laughs> I will conquer the world <laughs> with an iron fist. <laughs>